I want to provide an advanced overview of the Unit 4 assignments. There's something called a reflection assignment and there's something called a discussion assignment on the same topic but different assignments, the same topic being immigration. Now the first of these assignments is under assessments and assignments and these are the reflections. Now the best explanation of the reflection exercise is when you click on this link in assignments. If you want to see what you have to do for that assignment now, you can go up to content, click on content, go down to unit 4, and you see there's information on reflecting on immigration. Now you're not going to be writing very many words. 150 words is only about half a page. One page type double spaced. 200 words is about three quarters of a page type double spaced. So you see you're not going to say very much. But what you want to show is that you understand the high points of the information on this page. So let's click on that page. When we do that it says interpret immigration data for the years 1880 to 1940. Now this was the most radical period of immigration in American history. What do I mean by that? Well I mean that immigration changed dramatically during this time. And when the period began, immigration was steadily rising and changing in terms of the sources where immigrants were coming from. But by the end of this period, 1940, immigration had been severely cut by act of Congress. And so immigration, which had been a, a key factor in determining the nature of American society and culture was virtually cut off as an important factor in shaping that culture. So you can see how dramatic the change was during this, this period by looking at these statistics. But when you look at these statistics, see if the answers to these questions become clear to you in the course of looking over those statistics you are not going to write answers to these questions in your reflection. I want you to be able to answer these questions based on the statistics in your head, ahead of the time when you answer the reflection. There's no way you can answer these questions in 150 words. But if you have the answers to these questions in your head, you can write an intelligent response to the actual question for the reflection. So if in the course of looking at these documents, you can answer these questions in your head, you're ready to write the reflection. And so that's what you do for the reflection. Now let's take a look at the Unit 4 discussion. Now once again, I want to make this clear. There is not as much work as you think on this assignment by reading through it. But the worst thing that could happen is for you to spend a lot of time doing the wrong thing. Now that you have a sense of what was going on with immigration between 1880 and 1940 based on the earlier work you did, you are now examining the immigration restrictions Congress passed in 1921 and 1924. This assessment is intended to acquaint you with the issues of immigration and nativism in America in the decade of the 1920s. And this assignment will build your skills in interpreting congressional documents and census data and hone your ability to analyze that information. You're going to perform the role of a representative running for a congressional district in Georgia, and you're going to create a video speech to the voters of your districts in which you outline your positions on immigration, especially those 1921 and 1924 laws. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to be able to know what those laws are, what those laws did, and you have to also try to understand what the perspective of the people of the Georgia Congressional District would be on those laws. And one way you do that is to figure out what relationship does that district have to immigration? In other words, are there a lot of immigrants in that district? Are there a lot of people who would support an increase in immigration? Or are most of the people there not immigrants and would likely support a decrease in immigration? Now to answer that question, you have to understand what motivated people to support immigration restriction in 1921 and 24. 
What kind of ideas did they have? Would the people of the Georgia Congressional District likely have those ideas? If they do, then I would think that someone running for that seat would be highly sensitive to those opinions and would probably mirror them in that speech. So you write and record a two to three minute speech in which you clearly outline your position on these laws for or against and explain why you take that position. Support your explanations with details and analysis and do not simply explain the provisions of the laws. So these questions here are not to be answered directly in your speech. I want you to have a position that reflects your knowledge of the answers to these questions, but does not directly discuss these particular questions. For example, you're not going to want to say in the video, I have this position on the Immigration Act of 1924 because X number of immigrants live in the Georgia's 99th district. Nobody would say it that way. But by knowing the answer to that question, you can know what that person would say in the speech. So here is information about those laws. Some of these links also provide information on Georgia's 99th Congressional District. Finally, practice your speech two to three minutes and then record a video of yourself through the discussion post and upload the recording to the post. And here's how you do that. Here's the criteria on which you'll be graded, and there is a rubric for this assignment as well under rubrics. So you're going to do more work on this assignment than on the other, but you know, you could take the opportunity to make this an enjoyable experience. I'm serious when I say that. We want you to come out of the assignment with an intelligent grasp on how to interpret statistics, and how to realize what they tell us about the past. We're not doing this to add to your workload unnecessarily. We're doing this just to see if you can understand statistics, interpret them, and realize their impact on the public in a particular time and place. Obviously, the more you look at those statistics and the more you do the readings on the attitudes towards immigration, the more likely you are to write a script which correctly represents the point of view of both a congressman and the public he represents in a congressional district on the question of immigration. I wanted to make one more point about the Unit 4 reflection exercise that precedes the discussion. You're only supposed to write on one of these two questions. Data's effect on your perspective and answer this question. Or immigration and your family. Consider immigration's impact on your family. Would they have shown up in this data? If so, where? And how has this shaped your perspective? Try to say something that would be unique to your family, and that would be especially good. But this is an example of how if you read through these assignment instructions too quickly, you will miss an important point, namely that you're only supposed to answer one of these two questions not both. So be careful as you read the instructions for this assignment. So I hope this has helped you with the assignment.